you the rapture will catch most people by surprise. Very few, even real Christians, will be watching and waiting. Jesus said, you should be watching and waiting, but I'm going to come when you will least expect it. Uh, so, first of all, we have the Christians removed. The Antichrist cannot be revealed until the Christians are removed. Uh, and we don't have time to go into that. But uh, So then we have the judgment of God coming upon this world. We have Antichrist taking over. Antichrist will seem to be a man of love. It says the, the world will worship him. And uh, whatever people he is killing, uh, I don't think that will matter too much to others because these are the enemies of, of the state. I mean, we're almost to that. He mentioned real Christians in Bethlehem. We're almost to that place here in America now. This is a, a ecumenical thing now. Don't stand in the way of this one world. Uh, we've got to just get along with one another and, and embrace what Islam teaches. You know, we're all taking different roads to get to the same place, right. is what they say. It's not true. Jesus said there's one way. Uh, and um, two destinations. So I think that there will be a blindness that will come upon the world. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. I, it's already here, in, in my opinion. It's amazing. Uh, that God will send them a strong delusion to yes. believe the lie. That what they want to believe, he'll help them believe it. Mm -hmm. Those who don't believe it will be taken. And then there will be multitudes, I believe. Well, the Bible says. I saw a great number under the altar of the souls of those who had been beheaded by the Antichrist. So they've come out of this great tribulation. So there will be multitudes that will be killed. But I don't think that the world will. It's not going to be on CNN. They're not going to mourn this. I mean, these people are enemies of the state. And they have to be done away with because the stakes are so high. Uh, unity. We must have unity. Uh, and it's... Um, unity is the most important uh, part for a one world government, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I think that's where we're going. I don't know whether that was what I was talking about at that point in the book or not, but it's close. Now I was wondered about what we do when we do rapture, since he mentioned the rapture. And I have a verse that I've it's always puzzled me, and I might want to have your viewers challenged with Ask Dave Hunt in the, in the car about that. That's Joel chapter 2. And in Joel chapter 2, it says very clearly uh, that it says here, the Lord gives voice before his army, verse 11. And what is that army? But you go to the beginning of the chapter, it says, for the day of the Lord is coming. That's the day of the Lord. And it says in verse 2, the second part of verse 2, a people come great and strong. Those are human beings. People. It says people. People is people. These are not locusts. And look what it says. Fire devours before them and behind them a flame burns. And it goes on to say this, this is a battle. These people come to bring battle. And look what it says in verse 8. They do not push one another. And it says, when they lunge between the weapons, they are not cut down. It means their body is glorified. They do not die if a bullet hits them or a sword penetrates them. Hmm. Can you tell me when a people are hit with a sword or penetrated with a bullet, they don't die? And if you don't believe that's the rapture, I have a question. It says the earthquakes before them. And it talks about the Lord gives voice before his army. That's the army of the Lord. Okay, for strong is the one who executes his word. And look, if you don't believe that's the rapture, tell me what does verse 16 say? Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and let the bride come out of her dressing room. Excuse me? If the bridegroom meets the bride, that is the rapture. And what are we doing here with glorified bodies? Who are these people with glorified bodies? And what are we doing? We're fighting over this issue called Israel. Why? Look what it says in verse 18. It says, then the Lord will be zealous for his land. Excuse me? Land. His land. So here we are going to be fighting in a battle, glorified bodies, bodies not being killed, it can't kill us, okay? And we'll be fighting over the land of Israel. And I've never heard anybody ever give any comment on Joel chapter 2 explaining these things and what do they mean to me? And I can go over the whole Old Testament and find you so many things 
that I've never heard anybody comment on them. I've never heard that. Yeah, no, of course, Wally and I, we're friends. Of course, <laughs> and, he disagrees with you. And we have uh, some serious differences on some of these things. He thinks Islam is going to take over the world. I, I don't think so. But anyway, Waleed, I think what you're overlooking is there's a change in verse 12 before you get to verse 18 or, or verse um, 16. And in view of what is going to come, uh, and I don't think this is, um, this is us being raptured, in view of what is going to come, therefore, verse 12, also saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning, rend your heart, not your garments, and so forth. Who knows if he will return and repent, leave a blessing behind him, and so forth. Uh, so I think here in these verses, it's calling upon the people of Israel to repent in view of the judgment that God says is coming upon them. And that's when he says, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber, the bride out of her closet. I think, in other words, stop everything. Uh, don't continue the wedding, whatever it is, and get on your faces and repent before God. So that's another view of that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I like to understand that uh, when he says bridegroom meeting the bride, uh, that's the rapture, and I like to see the whole thing within context. No, no, he didn't say. It says, <clears throat> well, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber yes. and the bride out of her closet. It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't say, that. It, I think it's saying stop the wedding, you know, let everybody, look what it says, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, those that suck the breast. In, in other words, everybody, whatever you're doing, you better fall on your faces and repent. So when the Lord gives voice before his army, who is that? Well, you know, uh, his army, he talks of, uh, it's not necessarily, the, I don't believe it's the army from heaven. He calls... Um, Nebuchadnezzar is his servant, uh, Cyrus is his servant, and so forth. He talks about the armies of the heathen that come and execute judgment on Israel as his army. And it happens also. in the day of the Lord? Well, it's right there, uh, on the day of the yeah, Lord. The, now we have to define the day of the Lord. Uh, <laughs> there again. <laughs> See, it's not a, it depends what you're talking about when you talk about the day of the Lord, because the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night. But the day of the Lord also, uh, if uh, Second Peter verse three, uh, chapter three, Peter says, the day of the Lord when the heavens will be removed and dissolved and so forth. So I believe this is a long period of time. Okay. Uh, and begins with the rapture, in my opinion. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Uh, we both uh, agree then there is gonna be a rapture? Of course. Okay. And uh, we fight so much on the